Previously I said there are several benefits to organizing our programs in terms of functions. So let's talk a bit more about program organization and we'll also talk about a function that we'll call main. The role of this function is to say where the program should start and we'll discuss that in a bit. But first let's define a task we want to do. So let's say that we want to calculate what is known as the body mass index. And this is given by 703 times a person's weight in pounds divided by a height in inches squared. Our program should prompt for a height and a weight and then return this body mass index, often abbreviated BMI. And BMI supposedly provides some measure of health, and we won't get into that here. If you do a search on body mass index or BMI, you'll find a wealth of information. Implementing this program as a monolithic piece of code without the use of function is really pretty trivial. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's create a new window here, and in it we'll write that WT and HT are simultaneously assigned whatever the eval function returns when it's given whatever the input function returns when the user is prompted with a prompt perhaps of enter weight and height. So there's one statement. Once we have those values, we can just print BMI is equal to, and then we can have the expression 703 times the weight, WT, divided by the height, HT, squared. And that's it. That's the entire program. It's really that simple. So let's save this program. And I could do that by hitting Command S or Control S. I'll call this BMI underscore V1.py. Now it's saved. We can run it. So I'll hit function key F5. There it runs. I'm prompted for a weight. Let's go with 120. And if I comma separate values, the eval function should be able to handle the input just fine. So let's go for 65 inches. That's 5 feet 5 inches tall. And we get a BMI that's just under 20. OK, that seems like a good way to go. But let's rewrite this program using functions and it will appear much more complicated than those simple two lines of code that we had before but this function based approach is really what we should use on much larger programs and we're just using a little trivial uh, task here to illustrate the construction of such a program let's start with a clean slate and then write a function based implementation of this program so I'll start with a new window here and first let's write a function that will assist in getting the input so let's call this get input it takes no arguments we could add a doc string here and say that this function will obtain and return the weight and height now let's set the variable weight equal to the float version of whatever the user responds with when they're prompted with enter weight. And we could be a little bit more descriptive and say we're interested in a weight in pounds. That's the end of the prompt. And we'll close down the float function. Now let's go with height is equal to the float version of whatever input passes to it after the user responds to the prompt enter height and we'll say this is in inches and now let's just return those let's return the weight comma height and that's the end of this function let's save this call it bmi underscore v2 dot py let's run this so the function key f5 now nothing happened because all we've done is define a function, but that function is now available to us. So it was called get input or get underscore input. Let's call it and we're prompted for the weight. Let's go with 120, a height in inches, let's say 65. And now when I hit return, I should see whatever this function returns. And we see it's returning the collection of 120 as a float and 65 as a float. The next step is let's write a function that will use 
a weight and a height and return that body mass index, the BMI. So let's return to the window where we had our previous get input function and add to that the function calc underscore BMI and this will take two arguments. The first will be the weight and the second the height. That takes care of the header and maybe again we could add a doc string. Let's say this function will return the BMI for WT pounds and a height HT inches. And then all we have to do here is return the value 703 times WT divided by HT squared. And the fact that we're using WT and HT for the weight and height variables here and we use weight and height for our get input function is perfectly fine because those variables are all local to the individual functions. Now let's save this file and let's run it by hitting the function key F5. Again, nothing happened, but that function is defined for us. Let's try invoking it. Let's test it to make sure that we've implemented things correctly. We'll call calc underscore BMI. Let's explicitly pass to it a weight of 120 and a height of 65. And now we see the same value that we got before when we just wrote that monolithic version of the program. Now let's add one more function to our file. So we'll come back here to where we wrote the previous two functions. This function will tie everything together. We'll call it main. It takes no arguments. And this is where execution will begin. And let's put a doc string in here that just says that this will calculate the body mass index. And what it does is it assigns to the identifiers W and H whatever is returned by the get input function. Then it will turn around and use those two identifiers as arguments to the calc BMI function. And it will assign whatever that returns to the identifier BMI. And then let's have a print statement in here where we print the string BMI is equal to and then whatever the value of the identifier BMI is. Okay, that's the end of this main function and that's where we want execution to start. So, so far in this file we've defined the get input function, we've defined the calc BMI function, and we've defined a main function, but if we just run things now nothing will happen unless we go to, for example, the interactive prompt and explicitly call main. But what we should do is if we want this to behave as a complete program is as a last statement in this file have a call to main. So we have three function definitions and then we call main. We say main do your stuff. I will save this file by hitting control S or command S and then function key F5 to run it and now that last statement in the file, that call to main, actually gets the process going. So let's enter 120 pounds and a height of 65 inches and we see what we saw before. Now let's go back to that window where we wrote our program and take another look at this. So again we created three functions, we defined three functions, and the last statement in this file was a call to one of those functions that we called main. Now the name main has no special meaning in Python. We could have called that function perhaps start. That would have been nicely descriptive. But there are some programming languages such as C and C++ where one has to include a main function in their program and that tells where execution begins. So many programmers will stick with that convention when working with Python and in fact will adopt that convention here we'll have a function called main in our programs and we'll start execution by simply calling main. Now we saw that there was a much simpler implementation of this where we had just two lines of code outside of any function but when it comes to larger problems, larger programs, this subdivision into tasks and assigning those tasks to functions is really the best way to go. So don't be fooled by what we've done here. Using functions doesn't usually make things more complicated. It usually makes them 
simpler to maintain, easier to debug, and easier to write in the first place.